up troops welcome back to the latana army i'm lit and this is dota underlords a lot of people have been asking do you know where have you been late i've had some great messages on twitter um and some dms you know what i've had on youtube as well so massive thanks to you guys all looking out for me and things like that. i really do appreciate that but what i've been doing is playing this dota underlords and it's been so much fun and what i want to do today is put a guide together so that you guys can play it as well you can get this on steam or on your phone as well it's on ios and android and i think it's in the play store or whatever else other phones use but it's actually really really fun and i've had a great great time playing it it's kind of in the vein of like hearthstone gwen and a few of those other games like that it's one of those pick up and play games the only thing with this one the games do take quite a while you can be taking anywhere from 25 minutes to 40 minutes i've had some games that have not been far off an hour so it's one of them games you can really get soaked up into but it's so much fun now you are ranked in this game i'm ranked at the minute as you can see over there i'm lieutenant rank three i've been up to lieutenant rank five so far but i've never actually hit boss level just yet if you have a look up here these are the ranks that you've got these five levels in each and if you can see that you've got upstart grifter outlaw enforcer smuggler lieutenant boss and then big boss is the one that i'm working towards i do want a video where i actually hit big boss it's coming it's on its way this game's one of those it's quite easy to play but it's quite difficult to master so without further ado let's actually jump in and i'll teach you guys how to play dota underlords by the time we're done with this guy hopefully you will be experts at it stay tuned Okay, so Dota Underlords is a game you play with seven other players. So there's seven other players in each game, and each person's got their own board or their own version of the actual game board. Now, at the start, as you can see here, you actually have a selection of five random units that each cost gold. Now, at the start, they're all going to cost one gold, and your gold's down here in the bottom right. You start with one gold, and each of the units is going to cost one gold. Now, as turns go on, these are going to go up in price progressively, but the price of each unit actually defines their tier. So if you have a, a unit that's five gold, for example, that's going to be a tier five unit and significantly tougher than any of these that we're going to pick down here. So to start with, we're going to go with this one. This is a bounty hunter and um, we'll just put him on the board there and as you can look underneath here what you've actually got is each one has got specific skills and you can see by the tooltip what that is so let's just go and have a quick look at our bounty hunter then so if we have a look at him he's got scrappy on there so a random ally is granted plus nine armor and eight hp regeneration armor and hp are doubled if you start the fight with fewer units than your opponent now what you find on that i don't actually get that bonus until i've filled up one of these bars now some bars take three and some bars only take two so some of the bars that you need to fill up only need two heroes with that skill some need three and you actually get a bump on that skill if i fill up the second bar if you look on there you can see if i get to six i actually get further than my allies gain nine armor and eight hp regeneration so what you're trying to do in each game is actually match these up as best you can for what are called synergies now the first three rounds in any Dota Underlords game you play are the warm-up rounds and they're what, what some people call creep rounds as well. They're not against other players. You get three rounds to gather loot. So every time you beat the creep rounds, you actually get to pick a loot item to put onto one of your heroes. So in this case, for example, we're going to get given a selection. We can have a cloak which gives us magic resistance. We can have a brooch of the martyr that gives us 50% mana, uh, mana gain from receiving uh, damage. We'll just go with the cloak for now. And I'll just put that on over here. So you just click on this little, that's got the notification on there, drag that onto him, and he is now wearing the cloak. Now, each round, we're actually going to get extra gold and extra XP. So we've got an experience point for that there, and we can choose another hero. So we're going to go for, we'll go for Bloodseeker on this one. There we go. And if we look, because Bloodseeker's actually got Assassin on there, the same as what the Bounty Hunter's got, we've actually got two little ticks there now over on the right-hand side. So if we get one more then we've actually got a synergy and we're going to get an additional buff on there as well. So this is the second loot round. So second loot round, again, this is automatic. This is not me now. I'm just going to kind of pick the team and put them out there. Think like Football Manager or any sort of uh, business management game that you've played before. It's kind of like that, I guess. Now I'm going to click this Queen of Pain because she's actually got the Assassin badge on there as well. So if we put her in there... What you can see now is we've actually got these three filled up. So all assassins gain 10% chance to critical hit for 300% damage. My units have got that now because we've filled up this line. I've also got this on there as well. You only need one demon, which is the um, one we've just picked. So the Queen of Pain is actually a demon, which means all demon units gain 50% pure damage active when you only have one type of demon unit on the board. And then they'll just fight automatically there. This should be quite an easy win. And because this is round three, we've got another loot round. Okay, you can have more of the same item. If you look down here, look, tier one, tier one, and tier one. Sometimes you'll get offered tier two items early. Sometimes you won't. It really does just depend. 
Now, in a turn, what you can do, you can buy units if you want to. You can save your gold if you want to and not do anything. You can actually rotate the unit choice by hitting this little uh, flip icon that we've got here. Or you can actually spend five gold and increase your level. Now, because we've actually got two axes down here, what we can actually do is upgrade the unit. And we can upgrade him there. Look, if we just buy him in now, he automatically upgrades to a level two unit. So it takes three level one units to make a level two or three level two units to make a level three unit. And each one of these is significantly stronger than the one before. So a level two unit is actually much stronger than most level one units. There are some exceptions, but the majority of it, the level three units are gonna be absolutely beastly. Now, if we actually move this onto the board now, because he's a level 2 unit, you can see there I've lost my synergy. I haven't got the assassin uh, synergy on there anymore. But I actually, in this particular scenario, this is where the tactics come in. I think it's worth it just because he's going to be so much stronger. Now we're going into turn 4, which means we're fighting against a real person. So we're actually going to be fighting, in this instance it's going to be bots. But in a normal game, you would be fighting against a real person. But we're going to fight Jess Bot for this one. And if you look on there, that went absolutely great. We actually took that one out, so that keeps us at the top. Now, when you win a round, you don't lose any health or anything like that. You're absolutely fine. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lose the next one deliberately just to kind of show you guys how it works when you lose and how you lose health. Okay, so depending what units they've got left at the end of the game is how much health you lose. So if you look on here, they've got one, two, three, four stars left on the board. So we'll lose four health. Now, it doesn't only work like that. Once you get to past round 10, you start to lose one additional health. When you get to round 20, you lose two additional health. Round 30, you lose three additional health and so forth. Now, your level determines exactly how many units you can have on the board. So if you look on there, we have five units on there. So we can put, well, level five, we can put five units on the board. Now, you earn five gold per round. Plus, you get another one gold if you win the game. And if, if you're on a win streak, you can get between one and three gold as well. If you're on a losing streak, you actually get gold rewarded for that as well, just to kind of keep you in the game. And it just means if someone starts to lose regular, they're not kind of snowballing out of the game and they're going to be out of it. You can always come back and you can always get another shot at this. One thing that a lot of players don't understand until much later on when they've been playing the game is how interest works in the game as well. Every 10 gold will net you one additional gold. Now that sounds really complicated, but it's really not. It just means that if you've got 10 gold in your actual inventory down here, so if you've actually got 10, like we've got down here now, just sell that one. So if you look down here, if you've got 10 gold in your actual part at the start of the game, it's got to be at the start when the actual fight begins. So if we press play there, so now that's locked in. I will get one additional gold because I've got 10 to start with. I've started the turn with 10 gold, which means I'll get one additional gold. If I'd have started with 20 gold, I would have got two gold extra at the end of the fight. Three gold, uh, three gold if I'd have got 30, four gold if I'd have got 40, all the way up to 50. So the max you can get is five gold in interest. So if you look at the bottom here, it'll actually come up with interest on top. So I'll get my five gold that should come up as well for doing the fight, base gold, and look, one interest and one victory, meaning that I got seven gold in total for that fight. Now, if I can get that up to 20, for example, which I don't know if I'll be able to do, but I'm just doing this for, just for science, we'll just, we'll just go up to it anyway. So if we look on there, now we're on 20 gold. So if we do another fight on there and we wait until the, the end of there to see what we get, now we'll get two gold interest just because we've got 20, we're starting the fight with 20 gold. So at the end of the fight there, five base gold, two interest, which means we got seven gold in total. We would have got an eight if we'd have got the victory as well, or maybe even we got a bit more, we'd have got maybe nine or ten if we were on a win streak as well. As this is a tutorial, I'm just showing you the basics at the moment, but that just basically explains interest on there as well. That is pretty much the whole game. There's not much more to the game than that. I'll just quickly summarize each one of those sections. So there's seven other players in the game. Each have got their own board which you visit each time you go to fight each one. At the start of each round, you get a fresh selection of five random units and units cost gold. The cost of a unit is based upon the level of the unit or what tier the unit is. So if a unit costs you one gold, for example, that's a tier one unit. If you look at Shadow Fiend on here, he costs three gold. That means he's a tier three unit, which means he's significantly stronger than the standard units. You have 25 seconds in the drafting phase to pick and place your units and fighting in this game is automatic. All players start with 100 health and losing a game gives stats that deduct this health. So if you lose a game and there are five stars left on the board, that means you lose five health. You'll lose an additional star per 10 rounds as well that is in there. But you don't have to work any of this out. The game will do all that bit for you. There's no math in this game in that sense. The game carries on until there's just one winner left. Units start with one star, but you can upgrade them by combining them together. Combine three of the same unit and you get a two star unit. 
combine three of two star units which is nine units in total then you will have a three star unit these are quite rare you know i mean you will see these most games but you know they're not easy to get and you can win a game and i've won many a game with no three star units whatsoever you can re-roll a selection for two gold just by clicking this little button here and you can also level as well you can actually buy some experience you can buy five experience for five gold there and that'll just mean you can put an extra person on the board sometimes just because every level that you are so because we're level six now we can put six units on the board one thing to note as well, you can also lock this selection, which means it won't refresh on the end of the next turn. So if you click this little lock button and you go through the fight there, once the fight's over and usually this refreshes, if you click this lock button, it will keep whatever's in there. You get loot rounds on the first one, two, and three rounds, and then also every five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on rounds after that. This, what you're seeing right now on screen is a loot round, which means once we've taken out these creeps, which are usually pretty easy if your squad's up to speed, if you're keeping up with the game, then what you'll find is you'll take these out and then you can earn special items to power up your units going forward. You'll also earn interest from each one for every 10 gold that you start the battle with. So if we look at here, we've got a tier 2 item there. We'll click on there. We've locked that in, so we've got the same units. This is not refreshed, and we've got the one interest there because we had 10 at the start of that. The next round now, because we've got 20, we would actually get two golden interest for that as well. Seems a really complicated game, but it's honestly, it's really not. I'm going to be playing more of this as the uh, days and weeks go on, so hopefully you're going to get to see some cool games on this. Guys, let me know down below if you want to know anything specifically or if you think anything's not explained well enough or you want to know something on the game to make it, you know, maybe to make it a little bit simpler, let me know in the comments down below. Also, for those of you that do play Dota 2 regular and you guys who are just watching the channel, do you know, just because you're fans of the channel and you're here regularly, which I love you guys, then let me know who your favourite Dota Underlords hero is. Who's your favourite character to actually use in this? My favourite, who I don't use very often because I don't usually go for that synergy, is Slark, who's actually a really fast... Um, you know assassin that we've got on there a scaled assassin that I use But let me know in the comments down below who your favorite hero in this game is maybe it's Medusa who's really popular The sniper, you know, I know a lot of the a lot of the archers and the rangers are really popular at the moment Maybe it's someone else like Enigma But let me know in the comments down below guys because I would absolutely love to know But guys, that is all there is to actually learning how to play Dota Underlords Massive thanks for watching guys and I will I'll check out the comments down below just to see what you guys are putting Just to see if you need any more information on that We're gonna have lots of games coming up on this in the near future and i will catch you guys on the next one thanks for watching guys